Okay, we are recording. So I muted everybody just in case um, you didn't yourself. So that's why that's going on. And if at any time you want to talk a little bit more about a particular subject or share your thoughts on the matter, you can do that in one of two ways. You could always raise your little hand. Um, there's a virtual hand on your dashboard um, on the control panel that you can click. So you do that and I'll scan um, through there from time to time to see if anybody would like to be unmuted and to talk a little bit more. Um, or you could always use the chat box too. So, okay, all right, everybody, here we go. So welcome to week two. Um, by now, you probably have a greater sense of, oh, oh, we got the loading button, hold on. Let me see. Let me check something. Can you guys still see my screen? I think some technical issue might have happened. Is everything still good? If you can just let me know. It looked like something happened on my end. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Edgar. Okay, cool. All right, so we'll start again. Uh, so welcome to week two in psychology of play. By now, um, after week one, a lot of those questions of how the heck does this class work has probably been answered. Um, just to review really quick, you know, you have your today, you have your call call to play due. And again, it's not a test, even though it says it's a test, it's just a series of reflection questions. So you can answer those without even doing any of the reading yet. Um, and that's just a way of priming you for the information and what the week's going to be about and help kind of get you grounded grounded and centered into, into the week ahead. Um, Thursday is when your initial discussion post is due. And then I wanted to point out something. If by chance you're late on it, you can always still submit it. So there's a deduction of like five points, I think, if you're late. But you can easily make that up by just responding to an extra classmate. So, you know, your comments to your classmates are due by Sunday, but you could always post to another one and then you make up in case you submitted yours a little late. So just wanted to bring your attention to that. Okay, so um, did any of you guys have any questions about assignments? I'd, I'd like to just kind of get those out of the way if you have them. Oh, Felicia says you can't hear me. Let me see. Is anybody else having problems with the sound? Okay, so is that a no? Okay, I can hear you. Okay, all right, thanks. I was gonna be like, what does that no mean? So the no means no, you're not having problems. Um, let me see, who was? Felicia, it might be something with your sound. Well, you can't hear me, so that doesn't help. Okay, all right, so hopefully Felicia will be able to get hers working. Okay. Um, well, if you guys, did you have any questions about the, t oh, good, Felicia, I'm glad you can hear me now. I was trying to talk to you and realized you can't even hear me then, so you're good now. Um, do you guys have any questions about assignments or activities that are due? If so, I'd like to address those now, and you can just throw a hand up if you want to ask it out loud or type in the chat box. So anybody have any questions? Let me see if anybody's raising a hand. No hands are raised. Okay, so right now there's no questions. Um, ooh, there might be a hand up. I just saw a little notification. Nope, okay. All right, so we'll get rolling. Um, thank you, Edgar. What is this week about? This week is probably one of my favorites, but I'm not gonna lie, I probably say that about every week just because I really get into what we're doing in the present. Um, just so you know me, my name's Emily Green. And I'm one of your instructors, so if you don't have me, it's okay. You're still in the right place. Uh, Marie will probably be your main instructor, um, so you're still in the right place. Um, let's see. So we already went over assignment due dates. This week, we're going to be getting into some history, and I can nerd out on history. I find it's really helpful, especially within this class, because it gives just like some bookends, some context, so there's a greater understanding of what we're talking about for week two, which is about the field of positive psychology. So you just wanna go into, give you some context to understand how the field really began and um, kind of the genesis of how people started even using the field of psychology, how it's evolved into where we are today. Um, 
I know sometimes when I hear the word positive psychology, I kind of have this like little upchuck effect because at first it sounds pretty Pollyanna and I really am not the Pollyanna type. Um, but I, what I do love about this, and this is what the context does, is it gives us a chance to get at the deeper underpinnings of what positive psychology is really about. Um, a lot of what's in pop culture right now about positive psychology, like that goes along with kind of the self-care movement. They're wonderful things. However, I like to always provide more of the deeper stuff. So I find that some people, if you're like me, and you're like, oh no, positive psychology, they're just going to say, smile about it or stay calm and carry on. Like those things always, un they just get on my nerves. So if that's you, then I think you'll really like this because it helps us get at what positive psychology actually is and the response to kind of where psychology in the field really began. So how you can get more out of it instead of just putting on ro rose colored glasses, because that's, you know, that's not really helpful. Um, but if that's something that is helpful for you, by all means, I'm not taking it away. I just want to provide you maybe a deeper look at the field. So then we're going to get into some really cool applications of positive psychology with some theory, but also some tools that are really, that are, is R is the right word, I think, that will help you um, not only complete the assignments this week, but you'll really see um, an improvement in your all around well being. Um, so, wellness and well being is really what, what, what we're looking into. We're going to talk about two things specifically, with, which is PERMA, um, which is a little acronym. And I always see a visual of a perm in my hair, in my head. That's not what it is, but we'll get into it in a little bit. And then we're going to talk about flow theory and how that impacts you and especially our creative students, because this is something that you usually find yourself in and you might not have had a name for it. And now this will give that to you. Um, and then, of course, we're also going to talk about at the end, you know, the, the stigma that is around mental illness and health and about how we can shift focus to really helping it be more about wellness so that it's applicable to us all and can really help everyone get the kind of help that is helpful. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to do a little check-in first. Any questions? If so, just type them in the chat box. Um, let me see. Uh, is the question, is it going to be the same thing, Felicia? Is that about something specific? Any questions about what was just going on or you want me to move on? I'm just seeing a couple of things in the chat box and y'all might have been talking amongst yourself and I'm not following. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started um, on the material. Yes. Let me know. What is it? Um, Type it in the chat box, guys. Oh, you asked a question. Okay, can you repeat the question? I'm looking at, I wasn't on the chat box then. Do you want me to unmute you and you can ask it out loud? Um, okay, I'm trying to follow. So it seems like, Felicia, you're saying it was not easy for me. And Fenric, you asked a question. You want me to, un all right, Fenric, I'm gonna unmute you. Okay, and then you can ask your question. Okay, I'm looking for you on the chat box or on the slide, so give me a second. Here we are. Unmute you. Okay, Fenric, you should be unmuted. Can you say hi? Hi, Ms. Bellin. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you well. I'm going to turn you up a little bit. Ms. Green. I said Ms. Bellin. Ms. Green. <laughs> it's okay. Um, I just had a question about the um the ads because I, I asked Miss Bellin about it, but I still want to just clarify. Mm -hmm. Um, is is it an ad? Do I have to speak or can it be like? Because she said I could do a thirty to sixty second ad. Mm -hmm. Uh, could I do? Do I have to speak or could could it be like something like I do off of Adobe Spark? Um, for me, you could do either. So I would say I would, I bet Marie would be the same. Um, if you want to include audio, you could, but if that's not what you're wanting to do, just make sure that you have all the other elements in on the ad. Um, so just so we can see what 
Henrik's talking about. I'll pull it up so we can go over it really quick. And so he's talking about some of the assignments for the week or the quest options. So let me pull up week two. My computer's been loading really slow. Um, so so what with with the creative projects when you're doing those, um, you can pick any format you want. Um, a lot of students like utilizing, you know, I, I get a lot of, um, what do you call them, like Google Slides or things like that. Um, so as long as you're just including things to me, it doesn't matter if you're speaking or if you're including, you know, the information in other ways. Um, and I'm assuming Marie is the same. She and, you, she and I are usually the same on that. Um, but let me pull this up if it will ever unload. Does that help at all, Fenric? Yeah, uh, it helps. Yeah, it helps. It helps. I just wanted to, to clarify because I don't want to just send an ad and then have no, no speaking and then it's a yeah. problem. So yeah, I hear you. Um, send a message to Marie just so you can confirm with her. But for me, if you're doing the ad, it doesn't have to have audio in it. So I just don't want to give you that right. mixed information. So, um, but what he's talking about. Um, over here, here, hold on, let me close this down for a second. Um, I'm going to preview mode so you guys can see. So for week two, your quest options, you'll notice that they change every week, except you do have the option of doing that schedule, the work, play, fit, push the whole entire time. Um, so in here, the, the quest options that you have are these. And I'll just run through them, and then this can answer maybe a little bit more of what you're talking about, Fenric, and then other people's. Um, so this one is about quest one. You could choose the one about getting involved, and this could be anything from volunteering or going to a networking event. So if you're thinking about ways to get more connected within your profession, um, whatever that might be. You can look for some meetup groups. I know that's how some students have found um, uh, some networking events in their area or on Facebook too. I know um, there's a lot going on in Orlando where they, they post things like that. Um, but it could also be anything that's just of service. So if it's more of a giving, if it's um, you know passing out food or things like that, that works for that too. Um, and we're just wanting to see images and some content, and the content could be images and descriptions of what you're doing. We just want to see kind of, I think of the creative pieces as put your week in a nutshell, you know, and if that's a visual representation, it's visual. Um, usually, uh, not clients, as students, you know, will add in their, what I find is that when they're answering their, their questions in the post, I get more context for the creative piece. So I think the more information and the more you support yourself in answering those main questions of your initial discussion post, that just provides me more of an introduction to when I open up your creative project, what I'm actually looking at. So that's always helpful that just answer your, your questions fully and then the creative project for me, then I'm, I know what I'm looking at right when I open it regardless if it's just images or it's also has some audio components or just some other, like I get a lot of um, uh, Google Slides or PowerPoints that has images and text overlaid with those things. So quest number two, again, it's the weekly plan. Um, again, you don't have to use this specific template. You can make your own, but just make sure you keep those priorities here. You know, the categories, I'm sorry, of your work, play, fit, and push. Um, and we have for work the, or those daily priorities, those main three things that you're, you need to do. Um, now, you might not have all three for the day, but you might every day. That's fine. So for today, you would probably have complete call to play, you know, so it's kind of like that. Um, so for quest number three, it's the brain teasers. Students really like this one. Uh, the brain teasers, you go and you select um, the ones that you're going to be doing, and then you're creating that creative piece that summarizes what that activity was like. So this is usually the one where I either get a lot of audio where someone might make just um, like a clip of them talking about their experience. Um, 
that's that's the one I usually get a lot of audio in. But if you want to just write about um, write about it and include some pictures, you can do that too. Um, so that's an option for Quest Three. You'll notice here it does say text only will not suffice. So that means um, it's not just writing like an essay about it. We do want to see um, you adding some visual aids, um, you know, to telling us what your experience was like. So the fourth is the most popular for this week, and it's the act of kindness. So you're performing two meaningful random acts of kindness. They can be to strangers. They can be to people that you know. Um, your creative deliverable here, you can create a newsletter, a newscast, or that radio commercial where you're sharing your experience. So I kind of think of this as you're making a PSA almost, like that public service announcement. And this is going to be, in Fenric, this might be, I think, the one you were referring to. Um, where you're, if you're making a newsletter, you know, you don't have to include audio, but if you're making like a radio commercial on that one, obviously you're going to want to have some audio. Um, but you could also do it in the form of a Prezi presentation or a, um, a PowerPoint where you're including, you know, what you did in your, in your advertisement, you're trying to entice other people to do random acts of kindness to others. So you could just show the benefits of that. You might include some images and then say, you know, it makes you feel more connected to your community. It boosts your sense of, um, you know, belonging and purpose and things like that. So again, you're just going to be either making a newsletter. And if you're making a newsletter, there's this really cool program. If you want to kind of really get into it, it's called MailChimp. In MailChimp, you can sign up for a free account and it helps you do newsletters. So that might be just another way of doing this one for the creative piece. Okay, so those are your quests for the week. Uh, Fenric, did that help you at all? Or you have any more follow up questions? Oh, it was the third one he's saying. Okay, um, Terrence asked a question Can we use situations that we've already done? Yeah, you can do another quest. That's fine. Um, yes, Brittany, it's called MailChimp. And it's a really easy program um, that helps you make a newsletter, and it looks really professional. So, so yeah. Oh, and he's talking about the third one. So, yeah, for the brain teaser on this one, um, you're, you're pretty much doing kind of the same thing as in Quest 4. You're wanting to entice people to exercise their brain and join you in the brain teasers. So, um, so again, you might have audio and or visual, but you don't have to have audio in the brain teaser one for Quest number three. Okay. All right, so, excuse me. All right, okay, so let's get back to the lecture. All right. <clears throat> okay, so into the material. So we're going to be looking at first the, the bookends I was talking about, which is traditional versus positive psychology. So just a quick little overview. Traditional psychology was really started from the beginning of seeing things as a pathology. So it was a disease-oriented way of viewing people. Um, this medical model was very helpful in some areas. Um, obviously, it was going to help those people who had very severe mental health or medical issues that were impacting them and limiting them. So the traditional way of psychology was very helpful, but it was only helpful to a very small portion of the population. Um, positive psychology, on the other hand, is a field that is much more broad. So it's looking at exploring how ordinary people can become happier and more fulfilled. So the positive psychology model, as opposed to the traditional model, is from a strength-based. So on one hand, you have the traditional psychology, which is that medical diseased approach. Um, and then you have positive psychology, which is that strength-based based approach. Um, positive psychology is really about infusing people and their lives with more meaning and purpose. So from the traditional way, that diseased model, you're looking at more of what's going on with people and how to assist them through um, medication, which again, for certain populations, that's really important and helpful. It can be very life-giving and can change the direction of someone's life and make them more functioning and more balanced. On positive psychology, they're looking at 
really the, you can think of it as like the worried well. So those of us maybe who are not suffering or dealing with mental illness or other um, biological reasons that impact people's mental health. So for those of us, how can we benefit? How can we improve our lives? And they use those two catalysts of meaning and purpose. Um, I always like the whole idea of looking at a joint approach because I want options for, for everyone. I know I want options and there might be times where for a specific client that I'm working with, because um, I, I think I mentioned last week, if not, it's in my intro video to my students, but for those of you who maybe didn't get to see that, um, I'm a psychotherapist and I do EMDR therapy. And the way that I view health is looking at how can I help people um, learn and grow and overcome their most distressing, distressing experiences, the trauma in their life, and any limiting beliefs that they have. Now, for some people, um, they're still going to need a higher intervention, which that traditional psychology is going to provide, which might include medication and things like that. But other people who I work with, they're not needing that intervention, but they're still benefiting from working through their own personal things and then also adding in these strength-based approaches like making meaning and more purpose. Okay, so a brief history lesson. It was way back in the 1800s that psychiatry really got started as a medical specialty. Um, the focus was really, again, on those issues that came from that medical nature. So these were things that had to do with maybe issues of the brain, dementia, seizures, and things like that. Um, Things were really treated as a nervous condition, and it was presumed at the time to be all from the nerves. Um, around the 20th century, you had a big pivot point with, I'm sure someone you've heard before, before Sigmund Freud. Um, he was the first one to really introduce theories about the role of the unconscious and the impact on behavior. So his work really, again, it made this real big pivot point in how we view mental illness. It suggested that not all of the psychological problems have to have that biological cause. In his belief that mental problems could be resolved by talking about them really helped revolutionize treatment. Um, some other important people into the field that really helped expand the narrow focus on the disease model to more that also applied in growth and well-being was... Um, Adler, Eric Erickson, Carl Jung, Maslow, and Carl Rogers. So for me, um, I'm a big fan of Carl Jung's work. Um, that's something that I, I really find a lot of help out as I'm working with the patients that I work with. Um, so I think that's a good summary of everything. And I want us to get into positive psychology. So positive psychology, when you think of this, you can think of it as an expansion of adding in more support to your life. So this is really about what week two is going to bring in to your life. It's just additions. We're not taking anything away. We're adding in positive resourcing into your life. So what is positive psychology? It's the study of what makes human beings thrive. And it's how to apply the principles so that we can develop a more um, model for growth, meaning, and have greater well-being that also extends not just to us as an individual person, but also to our relationships and our communities. Um, again, you know, it's not saying anything's wrong with traditional psychology. I look at these as two sides of the same coin, and they can be very helpful when you can have both of those perspectives. Um, okay, I already talked about this. Okay, so Positive psychology, some of the big two figures, one is Martin Seligman, and what I really appreciate about this person and what he's brought is, is his big contribution is PERMA. Um, PERMA is an activity that you're going to get to really dig into this week and apply in your own life that really helps us get that broader perspective. Um, you know, for a lot of us when we're in in life, we can get these tunnel visions, and when you're in stressful situations, like you guys are probably balancing a lot, uh, your students, you're part of a family, you're working outside, so you're doing all of these things, and it, it can be a very stressful experience. So when we're under times of stress, what do we do? We get tunnel vision. 
PERMA and the application of it, as we're going to get into in just a second, is going to allow and help us all kind of take a big first deep breath and get some perspective of our life and be able to organize it and do a little check-in. I think of PERMA as a check-in, and this is going to make a little bit more sense when we get into it. Um, the other really big figure in the field of positive psychology is Dr. C. I always mess up his name, so I'm not even going to try. Um, what has always been really inspiring for me about his work is where it first got his attention. So he was um, in Hungary at the time of World War II, and what he saw after the war was he saw two different types of people. He saw people who were ruined from the experience, and that makes perfect sense for the things that they went through. But then he also noticed another group of people that went through those same things, but they still had a sense of dignity and purpose. And that later group, who still had dignity and purpose, were able to become more functioning and move on with their lives. So this is where for him, where he really started focusing his work on, well, what is it about that later group? Um, what are the things that are innate to them and how they view themselves and the world that allows them to survive such trauma and not be completely consumed by it? What allowed them to go on? And so his main theory is flow theory, which we're going to get to in a second. I'm just going to do a little pop in in the chat box and see how we're doing. Looks like y'all are doing okay. All right, so we're going to get going some more. <clears throat> so these are the two figures that you're going to have a lot of uh, reading about throughout the week. And by a lot, I don't mean like overwhelming amount, but you're going to meet these two people and get to know more about their work. So Dr. Martin Seligman, he was the number one figure we mentioned. His big contribution was a theory of well-being, which he broke down into this acronym of PERMA. So what I love about PERMA is it really helps to get rid of the rose-colored glasses view of happiness. Um, Seligman really sees happiness more of um, in a broader way. So if you're anything like me and the idea of just happiness and, you know, getting to feel better kind of is like, well, is that real? You know, is that legit? I always like to tell these, if you're like that, you might want to substitute happiness for a different word or a different goal. So it can mean something like wanting more um, awareness in your life, more confidence in your life, wanting to feel more centered or grounded. Um, happiness is a great goal and it can be a, a byproduct of a life that's meaningful and engaged and balanced. However, if happiness is one of those you're like, that just sounds kind of cheesy to me, um, I totally get that. And that's when I sub in, like, I want to feel more conscious. I want to feel more aware, more connected. So those are things that you can decide based on kind of how you are and how you operate. Um, it, that, that's just something that I, I like to share. Um, let's see. So we're going to talk about PERMA. So PERMA is that acronym where P stands for a positive emotion. Now, the use of PERMA it really allows us to first get a bird's eye view over the different dimensions of our life. So Dr. Seligman looks at positive emotion as a very helpful way of fighting back against pessimism and despair. So if you're in that first step of PERMA and you're wanting to cultivate positive emotions, so this is again coming from a strength-based perspective when you're recognizing you can go from feeling disempowered to empowered by cultivating certain experiences and emotions in your own life. So for a positive emotion, you're going to be focusing on and identifying, creating those. So again, that might for you be happiness, but it could be joy. It could be feeling peaceful, calm, appreciated, connected. So these kind of emotions for the positive emotion is that first step of, of PERMA. So you're focusing on identifying what are those emotions that are positive that you want to have more of in your life. So E stands for engagement. And engagement is really about being proactive about your mental and your emotional state 
through the things that you're doing. Um, this is going to be about looking at the activities that are meeting your needs. Um, this is where you can enter into the flow state, which we're going to get into when we, we get more into Dr. C's work. Um, so engagement in an activity where you are feeling confident, you're feeling engaged, you're absorbed in a situation or a project. Um, and again, those are all, we'll get into it in a second, more about flow. So engagement is when I like to say you get really picky about what you do, about what you say yes to, about where you commit to. Um, and this is one of those where I find that social media impact is a, is a really a good area to apply this. So where are you spending your time? Are you on you know, social media past that point where it's helpful? You know? So this is really about evaluating what are the things that you're engaged in and are those things adding to your life and that, those positive emotions? Like, is it adding to your state of being calm or happy or peaceful? And if it's not, then giving yourself the chance to engage in something else. R of PERMA is all about relationships. So we human beings, we exist in relationships. We are relational beings if we like it or not. So R is really about being aware of the, the community of people that you have in your life. Um, do you have positive relationships? Are they meaningful relationships? What are those relationships adding to your life? So again, you can look at PERMA in this step as a way of just evaluating and it doesn't have to be like super bad or super good. You're just taking like that bird's eye perspective, that kind of um, outsider view of your life to really just do like a, like a check on each of these areas. Like how am I doing in my relationships? And if you're like, Oh man, you know what? I'm really struggling there. Like no wonder I, I'm, I don't have like a, a good group of friends I can lean on right now. You know, that might be an area where then you can get greater understanding of why you feel stressed or why you might be feeling more sad. Um, and then with what we're going to be doing moving forward, you can look at ways of how to improve that area. So in all of these areas, the goal is not to say, oh, I'm failing on that or I'm great in that. You're just wanting to get a view of yourself that allows you to assess what are all of the areas that are either contributing to your well-being? And then what, if any areas, could you need some improvement on that would help that? So M in PERMA is all about meaning. Um, this one is about getting into, you know, those things that are connected to more than just outside of you, the bigger things of life. Um, belonging to and serving something that you believe in that is more than just you and your life. Um, this relates to our need for spiritual or higher purpose. So for some people, they find that their individual faith is a really big part of what gives their life meaning. For some people, it's their different view on the meaning of life and their purpose here. Um, however you fill this area, the truth is we all have a need for meaning. Um, that meaning might be related also to being there for your family, um, you know, being a person that's growing and, you know, becoming their best self. So however meaning is met for you, this is that area where you're evaluating, you know, do you have a lot of meaning? Um, how are you on this one? A lot of our students have a lot of this because they're here at school. But I always like to remind them, well, don't forget, school's just one part of your life. So maybe what are some of those bigger meanings, um, you know, those bigger themes in your life that you can plug back into or look to identify that can help support you more? So A is for achievement. And achievement is really about your growth potential. So it's not just about winning an award or being recognized, it can also be something much more personal where you're recognizing your own growth. Um, this is about, is about striving to better yourself in any kind of way, and it could be just through um, achieving a specific goal that you've set, mastering a new skill, accomplishing a task, you know, becoming your better self. 
anything for you that applies to your growth potential is what A stands for in is achievement. So PERMA, again, is a really helpful concept that breaks down wellness and how those different areas work to give us a sense of happiness, joy, um, just balance and well-being. So then this activity and looking at the different areas of your life, think about it for a second. What areas do you find that are working really well for you? And maybe for those of you, you're like, man, I realized, man, I, I, I really want to work on my relationship life and, and have more healthy interactions with people around me. So if there's anybody who would like to share um, your thoughts on PERMA, um, you can type it in the chat box. If you want to speak a little bit out loud, you can throw a hand up and I can unmute you. Let's see, James says, yes, meaning this is the reason I'm an emergency responder or trainer. Uh, James, that's great. So you can see how meaning is like it weaves throughout all different areas of your life. And that's what I find is really important and helpful for meaning is because it does that. You know, it, it's interlaced through everything and can be a really good field for someone. Um, let me see. James said, my wife and I had to remove some relational tumors, poisonous relationships. Um, that's, that's something I'm glad you mentioned that. So when you're looking at your relationships, you can think a lot of times of which ones are those healthy relationships and then which ones are toxic relationships. Now, some people go really kind of hardcore and they cut people out of their lives. Um, and maybe for certain situations, that's what you might need to do. Um, there's also ways of just, uh, you know, getting really picky about who you say yes to or how much time you spend with other people. So I think relationships and what James is talking about is really important is to identify, well, out of those relationships in your life, you know, who's who's that really good person? You know, who are those positive interactions? Who is a big drain? Um, who feels, you know, more toxic and getting to re reevaluate how much you're investing in those different relationships. Let me see. Um, Edgar, you say, I can relate to meaning. Going to church is an important part of my life. Um, that's, I, I got to tell you, you know, faith and spirituality is a really big one for, for a lot of us, you know, being able to be um, connected to a higher purpose. It, it's one of those, I, I think of it as like a buoyancy. It, it can really help no matter what's going on in someone's life. Shalise says, thanks to my wife, I took the rose colored glasses off to veteran, to certain people and I cut them out of my life. Um, you know, sometimes that is a hard look when we take those ro rose colored glasses off, but being able to see what's really in front of us can be very helpful um, because then it can give us more choices. So again, you know, remember you can do the cold turkey and cut certain things out of your life, or you can also really just start decreasing that time and increasing maybe other people you're spending time with or other activities. When you think of engagement, and this is one that's a big one for me, um, and this has a lot to do if you think about your play personalities too and kind of what how you're spending your time, um, the things you love to do, you know, getting to reevaluate, well, the things that I'm participating in, you know, that engagement, is it life-giving for me? Now, I get it. Doing schoolwork might be pretty draining on you, yet you can balance that out and see that it's working to a higher purpose. You know, you're working on achieving something. But if working on your schoolwork or, you know, working on a high-stress project is really demanding and overwhelming, making sure that you're then spending time engaging in an activity that is light. Um, so that might be one of those play activities that you identified, or it might be, you know, going to church or spending time with a really good friend. So you can see how this view of PERMA, and again, I can't help to think of it. It just gives you that outsider looking in of your own life and not a critical lens, but just you're observing. And so then you can see, oh, well, you know, hell's bells, of course, I'm really stressed because guess what? I feel really overrun with everything in my life or my relationships. Man, there's just too many toxic people. Or, you know what? I need to get more meaning in my life and I want to be working towards something. So you can see how this is just a really good tool that you can use that really helps you assess your own well being and come from what I call a very compassionate place instead of a critical place. 
because I know a lot of us have been raised with that belief that, you know, we got to be really hard on ourselves. And so PERMA is a way that I, I think helps students and myself come at, um, come at ideas of self-care and wellness in a much more compassionate way. Okay. Um, let me see. I, let's see. Alexander says, I pray a lot due to a recent change in relationship with family and the life changes that have recently happened. Alexander, you point out something really important. You know, there are going to be times where there's an, maybe an unexpected event that comes up where it really throws you off balance. And I think when we, we think of well-being, it's like, oh, the key is to be balanced all the time. Well, that's just not how we work. You know, we are able to be thrown off by something. That's because we're human and we're impacted by what's going on and those things that aren't going on. But PERMA is going to help us recognize that in a really helpful way so that you can pull on one of those other areas. So if you're going through a time where relationships are really rocky right now, or there's a lot of stress in one, well, you don't have to make that okay all of a sudden, because that's one, that's not you know, that's not really doable, but you could pull more from meaning. You could, you know, go to more engagement. You could look at other ways to elicit positive emotions in your life. So it's just a really good way of, I think, helping you stay well-rounded even when you're going through hard times. So it's not about being at 100% on all of these. There's going to be times in our life when, yeah, our relationships are just lower than we want them to be or when we're not feeling connected to meaning in our lives. But these other areas are there to help um, kind of make up for that. And over time, you know, you get to be intentional about developing healthier relationships or more meaning. Um, let me see. James says, I don't really get stressed unless it looks like I'm out of options. I crash spiritually, emotionally, and physically. My kids and wife tend to pull me out. Um, or a long day in the woods, man, you know, that's, um, that's really insightful of you. I think it's really helpful when we can look at ways to also prevent us from crashing. Right. Um, and I, I can totally relate to just give me some space in the woods and I'll be okay. I live really close to a park. Um, it, it's just, I love it cause it's one of those wild parks. It's not like really fancy. It's like more like just the woods. And there is nothing for me like just going smack dab in the middle of that park. And it's just very, um, it, it connects me. It, it helps me when I'm, when I'm stressed. Um, Brian says meaning really hits home with me because finding the meaning behind everything is what's most important to me. And at this time in my life, um, since full sale, it's a higher purpose for me. That's wonderful, Brian. So being able to connect your higher purpose to what you're here at school for, those are just strengthening and um, strengthening effects on one and the other. So again, this is really, I mean, to me, I think it's one of the most useful concepts that you'll learn um, throughout the whole month because it's just, I don't know, to me, I just really love it. Amanda says, I agree with Brian and full sale is very helpful how I want to improve my achievements. So you guys can see how you can, can connect some of these activities in your life. Um, you know, to more than just one. So you've got being here at full sale, it's connected to achievement, it's being connected to engagement or to meaning. Okay, so thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate that. Let's see, we got about 15 more minutes. So I want to introduce you to flow theory. So flow theory, you may or may not have heard of it. You're going to learn about it more this week. It's by Dr. C, um, the Hungarian psychologist that I cannot pronounce his last name for the life of me. Um, he talks about flow states. So what he recognizes is these alter, altered states of consciousness that people get into, not from taking any kind of substance, from, from getting in the zone. So it's a state in which you are so involved or immersed in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. It's kind of like the experience is just so consuming that you're in it and everything else disappears. And the purpose of it, of, of the activity that you're doing, is just because you love it. So even if it's something that might come at great cost for you or even a great challenge or effort, you'll continue doing that just because it's something that you love doing. Um, flow states help a lot with increasing productivity and enhancing performance. So times when you might find yourself in flow states are when you are engaging in activities that have nothing to do with work. It might just be playing around with learning a new skill. If you're wanting to, um, even if I'm thinking of 
like game design or you know audio production, re really any craft that you're here at Full Sail for, no matter what modality it's in, if it's audio, visual, um, you know, communicating to others through, if it's written or or orally, you know the the things that you're doing, the work of it the project you might be working on, you might find that you get really in the zone because it's also your work as a full sale student, most of, most of our full sale students, their work intersects with the things that they love. So at that intersection of the creative outlet um, and then also the project that you're working on, it has this, I think, I see it in my mind as this intersection where there's play involved and there's also challenge. So being challenged by something is often thought of as like, oh, you don't want to be challenged in life. But the truth is challenge to some degree is very energizing. It allows you to go into the zone where you're applying yourself in an effort and then you're also doing it on a project that you really care about or that's really important to you. And for a lot of people, you know, in their work life, they might be doing something that they don't love. They're doing it because, you know what, it's the best job that they can get and that's what they need to do, which is totally fine and very important and helpful in some periods of our lives. But when people are involved in a job that they love to do, which a lot of our students, you know, that's the goal if you're not already there is to get into those they find that they experience flow states a lot more because of their creative profession. Flow also helps with um, enhancing your performance. So you might have noticed when, if you're ever working on something um, and you get so into it, you're able to overcome um, stresses. You're, you're able to like up level your performance in a way that you didn't expect you could because this flow state is really actually releasing a lot of the blocks and the doubt um, and you're in this really cool synergistic state where things are just coming together. Um, getting into flow state, um, for a lot of people it happens when they're performing an activity, um, when they're putting their all into it. Uh, again, this is really kind of like looking at challenges as a good stress instead of bad stress. And we have noticed that flow states, they're not something that you're going to experience not saying you're never going to, but they're not going to happen when you're chilling out. You know, like when you're doing some passive activity like watching TV, you're not going to get in a flow state. You might kind of get in the tunnel vision state if you're binge watching something on Netflix. But um, to get in a flow state, it really does require effort. And that can be mentally, emotionally, physically in, in those areas. Um so you'll learn a little bit more about flow states and how you can recognize the areas where you tend to get into that. Um, I know for me, like I can really get in a state of flow when I'm playing the piano um, or really when I'm doing my martial arts. So I do Kung Fu and Tai Chi and it doesn't happen all the time, <laughs> but there are times when I get in a state of flow when I'm really in the zone and I find that my performance is better in a really kind of surprising way because all of these elements are just coming together. Um, and again, that really happens more. I've seen when I'm learning, not on the first time learning a new level of a form, but when I'm at maybe like a couple in and it's been difficult, but then there can be these moments where things just come together. Uh, so you might notice that you experience states of flow in some of your activities that you do outside of kind of the work and school category, but you very well might find them when you're engaging in work in school too. Um, so yeah. So the big takeaway for positive psychology, it really comes down to a few maxims. Um, and Christopher Peterson, he died relatively recently. Um, he was a more recent researcher in the field, um, really honed in on these three. And for me, these really are, are good anchors for me or, or touchstones when I think of positive psychology and well-being. So he, he defined first, what is a good life is as genuine as what is bad. So this one really hits home for me in the application of, well, to have a good life, it's not about 
not having problems. It's about more than that. So yeah, it's great when everything's easy, but when it's not easy, that doesn't mean we have to make it all bad. We can still enhance our life to find good. Um, number two, what is a good life? What is good in life is not simply the absence of what is problematic. So again, it's just really getting more to the heart of what is genuine, um, what is, I think, meaning and purpose-based, not just circumstance-based. And then number three, the good life requires its own explanation, not simply a theory of disorder uh, stood sideways or flipped on its head. I just love that quote. Um, I can't even really tell you exactly what it means, but it speaks to me in a very uplifting way that makes some um, certain things you don't need a theory. Yeah, there are tons of theories. You've learned a lot about the traditional theory of psychology from the disease model, the strength-based approach from positive psychology. But with or without them, we're still living our lives. Um, when we know about them, they can certainly provide us more insight and understanding into ourselves and our circumstances. But at the end of the day, we're living our life and our life is going to get flipped here and there. We're going to go through good and bad and being able, I think, to weather um, life storms and then also celebrate, you know, the things that deserve celebrating are really helpful. So to me, these three are just, I think of them as touchstones in my life, especially when things are really rocky. Um, so just a little wrap up. Um, this week, you're really going to get a chance to view your well-being from the bigger perspective and then break it down into parts to see how those parts contribute to the whole. Um, you're going to find that many things impact your well-being. A lot of these you're already going to know, and then you're just going to get to strengthen that. So you know how you spend your time matters. You know that your relationships matter. You know that your belief sets matter and how that's connected to your purpose and meaning and achievement, um, but you're going to get to take an intentional look at all of these things. Um, and remember, you know, human functioning on a whole is made up of all of those areas. You know, there's going to be biological things going on um, that has to do with health and things like that. You're going to have your personal life, your relational life, your institutional life, which, you know, full sale, that's one of them. Um, your cultural uh you know, your cultural life, and then just, you know, being a global citizen and all the things that are impacting you from there. You know, we're a much more interconnected community from the whole, and we get in a lot of information. So we can be impacted, if not personally, by something that's happening somewhere else in our country or in the world, but we hear that, and that really does impact us. So this is just that reminder of sometimes we forget, um, and that's fine. Um, but we forget that we're, there's more going on to our states of emotional health, mental health, and well-being than just what we are necessarily aware of in the moment. So this week is really about helping you kind of get outside that tunnel vision and checking these different dimensions of your life and looking at, well, you know what, how is my health? Um, oh, huh, it's kind of struggling there. You know, maybe I just got hurt or I was in a car accident. And I'm really struggling getting back on my feet. This can be that reminder of, well, you know what? That makes sense. I'm struggling right now. Or man, my personal life, man, my personal lives are going great. Like I'm feeling really good about myself, but man, relationally, ah, I, I'm feeling, you know, lonely. Like I want to feel more connected. So this is just giving you again, just some different ways of evaluating what's working and um, what are some areas that you need uh, to focus on. Okay. Um, this is just a silly analogy, but I feel like I've hit it enough. I don't need to repeat myself. Um, so really this week, I hope what you'll take away is looking up like the slices of your life. You know, it's like the whole pizza thing. You take a slice out, you know, you have less, but you know, what are those slices that you can have more, um, that really help add to your well-being? All right, guys. So that's the gist of this week's material. Um, I think now you'll understand more about how the quests relate to that and help you get engaged with, different aspects that work to your wholeness, which is a part of PERMA. So you'll find that a lot probably when you're writing your initial discussion post, which again is due Thursday, you're going to be pulling most likely a lot from PERMA. Um, okay, any questions for anyone? Let me see. Um, Felicia, I see your message. Um, I'll get back to you. Let's see, Edgar, in quest number three, if I do in text, 
can my visual be a screenshot from my phone doing the brain teaser? Um, yeah, you can include that. And then in Quest 3.2, hold on, let me look, because um, this is something we talked about earlier. Select three brain teasers to complete. Um, creative delivery, you're creating an audio and or visual ad promoting the importance of strengthening your brain. So just make sure you're doing that. Um, so it can't just be written words, but you can include images. So if that's you doing it um, and then sharing, you know, what that was like for you and how it helped you, you can do that by adding some audio over that or visual and or text. But it just can't be a picture of you doing that. So you got to add more in. Does that make sense? Let me see. So quest one can be about a past situation. Let me see. No, it needs to be currently. So Terrence, it's not about reflecting on something you did. Um, it needs to be about something that you're doing this week. So, um, but if you want to include in that, maybe like this is something that, you know, you were inspired to do because it impacted you well, maybe when you were volunteering at something, you know, a month ago or last year, but it needs to be something that's current. Okay, cool. All right. Any other questions? All right. If not, I hope you guys have a great week. Don't forget you have your call to play that is due today at the end of the day. Um, you're just getting into the reflection, you know, on the questions. Um, and then that's going to help you get the idea of which quest that you're wanting to work on. And then you're going to go from there. So I wish you all the best. And uh, for week three and week four, Marie is going to be teaching the live lectures. So I've really enjoyed getting to teach these with you at the front of the week. And she's looking forward to close them out with you um, in week three and week four. All right, everybody, take care. Um, you'll get a link to the recording if you want to watch it again um, tomorrow by noon, if not before. All right. Thanks. Oh, and Terrence is saying if anyone needs assistance, you can reach out to him. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Oh, Terrence. Excuse me. Um, this is a great chance on here. You just reminded me. Um, if you guys want to exchange contact information in the chat box, that's totally cool with me because I know that some of you might be in the other classes. But if you connect with someone, please feel free to use this as a way to change, uh, uh, not change, swap information. Okay. All right. Thanks, Brittany. Thanks, Terrence. Thanks, everybody else that was here. Um, Felicia, I'll reach out to you later and we can go from there. Bye, everybody.